you know, he didn't make the varsity team when he was a sophomore. They interviewed his mom and, hey, you can do something about it or you can quit, you know, and she goes, he never left the basketball away from himself ever. Don't you wish you could kind of, every kid should watch that, it sounds like. Right. Regardless of what sport you're in or activity. All right. You just get her done, Luke. Don't kick the tree again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she Luke today. My Luke. Yeah, I, that's what I figured. Kicked a tree? Yeah, he was disgusted and having to do something more, and so he went over and... Kicked a tree. Kicked a tree. Hug him. <laughs> but he's going to keep doing it. He had to get in the tractor and roll after the beans were planted. It, he rolled the yeah. huge machine. It was just boring. And he didn't want to do it? Nobody told him that's where he was going. We all just went to the field and, oh, Luke, you're in the roller. <laughs> that's funny. Okay. What time is it? Oh, it's 629. 629. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Lindsay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Good. Okay. Congratulations, Andy. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> yes, congrats, Andy. Thanks, Nate. If you're trying to figure out who's doing the talking, okay. If I can talk just yeah. enough, the yellow box kind of shows up, that yellow line kind okay. of shows up around that for everybody. Angie, congratulations on your daughter. Oh, thank you. What's next for her? UW Platteville. Like oh, okay. Speak. Mm -hmm. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <clears throat> right now, she's hauling fertilizer if it's not raining. <laughs> That's a good job. <laughs> Okay, Dr. Dunn looks like he's on, or getting on now. So that at least gives you four board members. Is that um, 0088 number? No, it I saw his. Down, just down below there. Oh. Gary's on as well. There's Gary's on. Aaron is on. There we go. Yep, okay. there you are. You guys hear me okay? Yeah, I can. Okay, Nate, we are at 6.30. So okay, uh, let's start with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Guys, and you want to call roll? Chambers? Here. Dahl? Oh, excuse me. Dunn? Here. Lindsay? Here. Ephes? Sullivan? Here. Bush? Here. And Heisner? Here. Um, Larry had talked to Nate and was going to try um, to get on by phone if possible or get back home to get on if possible. Um, but like all farmers, when the rain's not coming down, he's trying to get stuff in the ground or out of the ground or <laughs> cursing the ground. One of, it's one of those things usually. Um, so first order of business, the oath of office, we have confirmation that um, all three of the newest elected members, member Sullivan had sworn the oath and is signing it in front of Angie, member Heisner and member Bush. So all three members came in, took out the oath, swore the oath and signed in front of a notary public. So all members are 
properly in place and done all of their requirements to be a board member. <laughs> Welcome aboard uh, to, well, Andy Bush again, um, Joni Heisner and Gary Sullivan. Congratulations on your guys' victory. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Congrats, Andy and Joni. You guys ran a very good campaign. It was nice to see we could all be civil. Thanks, Gary. You as well. Yes, I echo that. So we're going to jump into the uh, action items first with the budget amendments. So what we have in front of you um, is where money is coming out. This is money that's currently in our budget and we wish to move that money into a new location, into technology, monies that will not be spent in these areas for the remainder of this school year. Um, so it's, it's a matter of this being required by law, being required for the auditors to show, okay, we weren't spending the money in, in these line items, so the 10E100, 171, we won't be spending any more money on elementary substitute teachers for the remainder of the year. So we're able to use that money in a different location um, and in, in an attempt to reduce our budget deficit, we would take all those monies from those differing accounts for a total of $104,637 and move it into one account for technology replacement of equipment. So it's a same dollar amount in both locations. And in order for that to happen, we would need uh, a motion to approve and, and then a vote so that we can make that budget amendment and adjustment. My question is, how did you pick technology replacement equipment, that category? Well, um, I don't know if you had a chance to see the email that I sent out. Yep, earlier. I did, yeah about the budget um, deficit we're gonna face. Yes, and, and that is one area, obviously a large ticket area that I can use to address the budget deficit for next year. Equipment yeah. that, that is needed, um, and if I can take it and purchase it now and remove it out of next year's budget, I can, re, I can change that deficit, you know, and get it down to zero, get a balanced budget, um, and actually, my goal by October is to try to push that into a, a surplus, if at all possible. Okay, I'll make a motion to accept this recommendation and amendment. I'll second, done. Uh, is there any more discussion on the, on the proposed? I, I have a question about the, um, the capital maintenance, the 50,000. We have a fund set up that's for deferred capital maintenance. Would it make more sense for that 50,000 to be put in, since it was initially earmarked for capital maintenance to be put into the deferred maintenance fund? There is still um, a lot of capital maintenance budget monies available. Some of them will be, will be used in the next agenda item uh, and we'll still be carrying some maintenance dollars forward. And when we get to the end of the fiscal year, um, you know, there will be, there's accounts like workman's comp. So if we don't have claims, some of that workman's comp money can, will go into that fund 46, that deferred capital maintenance account that, that allows us to use it for capital maintenance projects in the future. So, so, so yes, monies will go there. We're, we know that we, We've, I've talked to Roger. Uh, I know that he knows that he won't be using that 50 and if it can be used to help offset the budget deficit for next year, um, he was more than happy to allow that to happen. Okay, so how did we end up $50,000 off in that budget? I understand other things come up, especially with um, being out of school since the middle of March. Um, so the rest of these line items certainly make sense, but a, a $50,000 departure from the budget on capital maintenance seems significant. At the, at the beginning of the year, um, we had looked at putting $100,000 and we put $100,000 in 
that line item for capital maintenance. Um, part of it was we had taken it out in the previous year and basically put it at zero um, coming into the budget, to the building budget. Uh, so it was replaced in the event of major, it's almost like it's, it's there for, uh, on a yearly savings account might be the best way to explain it. If a boiler goes bad, if um, one of the walk-in coolers or one of the walk-in freezers goes bad, if you know some major equipment piece breaks down during the course of the school year, we try to make sure that we have monies available in capital maintenance that we're not impacting some of the other educational programs and saying, oh, well, you were going to do that and now you can't. Um, and then when we get to the end of the end of the school year, there might be some pieces of equipment that break down or need to be replaced or cycled out. And that's usually a place that we can go to um, use for, for some of that equipment because it goes to the maintenance department. Okay, so that makes sense. I got a, I got a question. Um, wasn't just too long ago, we were discussing about the safety issues with our bleachers. And now we're transferring 50,000 from capital maintenance over to spend on technology. To me, I guess I question whether that's being spent the right way or not. Uh, we are still trying to get an answer for the bleachers. Um, but if the money was available, I think it'd be nice to know. Yes, and, and I, think, I think there will be still some money left in, capital, in some other capital maintenance accounts that may cover that, that bleacher remedy of putting some aisles on both sides of the bleachers. Um, this is for, uh, for the new board members, I thought the last, the last figure I thought was a, a shade over $30,000, if I remember correctly. I, I, I think you were right, and we're still, as you can probably imagine, when you, when you contact the state, <clears throat> they'll tell you that your, your builder or your assembler, they should be able to tell you so then you contact the builder assembler and they'll say, well, I can, I can give you a recommendation, but the plan needs to go to the state and they will either approve our plan or deny our plan. So, you know, you kind of fight that circle argument of, well, can you tell me how many aisles I need for the number of seats I have? Well, you tell me how many you want to put in. Well, you know, I don't want to play this game. I want you to just tell me bleachers for 1300 people how many aisles will meet code and they're like put a plan together and submit it to us so we're, we're still kind of fighting that fight we, we think we think we might be able to get by with two on each side which might bring it underneath that 30,000 so we're, we're still hoping to get an answer and Roger still has monies where we might be able to address that need. So this, the 50,000 is that, that's not included the, uh, the maintenance for uh, Rogers new mower. Is that correct? Or is that a that's different thing? That's a different, that's a different capital maintenance account. Yes. Yep. Got it. And one of the things we had talked about was, was using some of that fund 46 money either to replace the bleachers or put new stairs, aisles and rails in but we're thinking we might be able to address that outside of the Fund 46 monies. Mitch, so just to clarify, what you're saying is that the, the $50,000 you're taking out of Roger's budget was not earmarked for any set purchases, uh, but was more of the contingency part of his budget that will not, that he won't anticipate needing to use for the end of the year. That, that is correct, yes. Were there any other categories of funds that you considered to move some of these funds into that you uh, decided were less of a priority in favor of this, in favor of putting it all into technology? Um, there, are, there are other teacher accounts that um, will have some monies left over. And um, right now I've directed the building administrators to look at next year's budget requests with the same lens. Can I, can I pull 200 from this first grade teacher and 400 from that third grade teacher and, 
and get to $1,500 and all of a sudden now I can buy, you know, workbooks or I can buy something now that reduces next year's budget. So they're looking at um, smaller dollar amounts to be able to do some of those things. Lana, bring me my earbuds. I think it's also important to, to note that um, spending in April and May becomes a little tougher in terms of school supplies or stuff because it has to be identified as something you're going to use this year and not next year, or it has to be technology that's going to be used for multiple years. So moving it to um, some other accounts where we would have Are to spend it this year may be more difficult given the, the current status of, of the school and the fact that there's not much going on in the building at this time. So it helps, helps the deficit next year, but it also- Did you send that to grandma? To no, that Do it! Usable costs this year in terms of- well, the Why is this all tangled? I'm glad you have time to do your clothes tonight. We're well, gonna get it on. I don't. Oh Jesus! All right, I'm. Hello. To, there we go. All right, I think I've got that problem taken care of now. I'm sorry for that. Um. Here, I was concerned it was Is there any other? <laughs> Concerns or comments on um, on the proposed uh, um, budget amendments? Uh, can I just confirm? I understand um, what what Andy was saying that we either any funds that are spent at this point in the year either have to be used, have to be spent on something that's going to be used this year or that has a year has a multiple year lifespan. Is that what you were saying, Andy? Yeah, in terms of like teacher supplies, because I've suggested okay. that in the past. Let's let's, you know, buy, you know, a thousand pencils, for example, a bad example, but for example, and, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, the answer has been, you know, when the auditors come in, they'll identify that as a, well, that's really a, a 2021 expense and should have been, you know, expense next year. Okay. So it becomes a little more difficult as we get towards uh, the end of the, the budget year and we have a surplus to try and spend it or move it to fund 46. Okay, thank you for, for, I just wanted to make sure I understood that. I think we have a motion and a second. Are we gonna have a vote? Yep. Okay, Lindsay? Yes. Um, Sullivan? No. Bush? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Eisner? Yes. Chambers? Yes. Did I get everybody? Should be Adam. six? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, and the next item is with that money being transferred, um, board policy requires approval for anything that's $5,000 or more. Um, I know the one item is, is under 5,000, but I wanted to make everybody aware of it. Uh, so you have um, two smart boards, Chromebooks. The Chromebooks will replace, will we'll give every freshman next year, a brand new Chromebook. And then we'll also replace um, the last of the Chromebooks that we knew were, weren't going to get us the testing. So we, we kind of dodged a bullet this year with our state testing and some of those other things that um, the older generation Chromebooks would not provide for. So this, this covers the remainder of those, um, the Chromebooks for the incoming freshmen, um, we've, we've gone the last several years with MacBook Airs for all the high school students. We have talked to all the staff members, you know, is that, do we go and look at leasing MacBook Airs again, or do we go to Chromebooks? Um, we're looking at, we're, we make the last lease payment 
in this upcoming budget year. So we will try to get the best mileage we can out of those MacBook Airs at the end of that year, at the end of next school year, um, we'll no longer owe money on those. We will probably look at keeping the best of them that are available so that we could have a classroom supply or potentially two. So somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, 40, if we can find them, maybe 50 that we would keep. Um, but a MacBook Air is kind of in that $900 range and a brand new Chromebook is $300. And the staff was all in favor of knowing that everything is really on a on the Google platform using a Chromebook would would be a, a better direction to go. Um, we need so, Mitch, yeah. I have a question about the specs of the Chromebooks. Three hundred dollars for a Chromebook seems um, it's definitely the top end of a Chromebook. Is there is there something unique about these or is it is it that they have a certain memory or certain um, speed component to them? It, it comes with the, the uh, like a protective case. So it's kind of an all in price, all in one price, the, the Chromebook itself. Um, it's a, I wanna say it's a 13 inch screen. Um, I don't have the specs in front of me, but uh, Dependable Solutions, our technology company um, got, the, got the quote for us and put it together. Um, but it's a, I think it's a 13 inch Chromebook with the protective case and that puts it all in at $300. And I, I think I might be rounding up a couple of dollars. It might be, you know, 290, 285, somewhere in there. I just- but. Based on the 6990, it's 294 per Chromebook. Do, okay. do they provide us more than one? Um, did Dependable Solutions provide us more than one estimate or more than one um, quote or is that is, is that go, the only quote we go with they go they go to multiple vendors to get quotes and then and then report back to me with the best and they would share you know we went to um for, for example they might go oh we went to best buy and we went to cdwg and got quotes and this vendor could get it to us for a better price you know, so we recommend that you go that direction. So yeah, yes, they will, they will do some shopping for us, um, especially through the school side to try to get us the, the best price for the quantity we need. Mitch, I, Mitch, I have a question. Um, uh, did you, it, I know that the middle school is using Chromebooks. Uh, has there been, and the elementary school too, have there been bad experiences with uh, security and um, them getting infected with viruses compared to say the MacBooks? Uh, none have been reported to me. Um, what, you know, <laughs> we're certainly in a different situation now. So I, I don't know if any families have experienced anything, nothing has been shared with me. Uh, and if, if a family were having a problem, they would need to con at least contact their teacher to get to the building administrator to pass the information along to dependable solutions. Um, but with the filters and the firewalls and things, they have been very well protected um, through, through the things and services provided by um, WISCnet and uh, dependable solutions. Thank you. I got yes. the I got the numbers of the top four here. It's one hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars, and we just transferred one hundred and four thousand over. Is that correct? That is correct. So that leaves us with roughly what twenty-eight thousand then. That were basically where's that money coming from? There are a couple of other accounts that I that don't require a budget amendment into a replacement account, I can, I can move those without, without having that, without the auditor saying this needed to be a budget amendment approval through the school board. I can use those, I can use the money in those accounts to make up for the difference. I, I guess my, my problem is I don't have a problem with Rogers needing more. If a guy needs more, you need more. Seal coat in the parking lots, that's maintenance that has to be done. Well, we spent $260,000 the 1st of May, or the 1st of April, I'm sorry, on insurance raise going up, 
in salary increases, and now we're looking to spend another $132,000 in the top four. And this is out of an operating, when we had a $350,000 operating referendum, and that money is completely gone. And if we're moving money, you know, surpluses, I don't, under, I don't understand the math in all this. It just seems to me like, how could we have a surplus that much, but yet we had to have an operating referendum, and now it's going to be spent and gone. I mean, the numbers of this just don't make sense to me. Um, one of the hardest things it, to, to say that the, the budget would be balanced and, and not just balanced on paper is that when we know there's an expense, we, we have a line item for that account. The, the hardest part is there are line items that we don't know if we will spend all of it. If, if we have a really bad uh, health experience on staff, there might be need for us to spend more money in our health insurance that, that applies to the, the high cost deductible. If we have injuries, then we have workman comp claim and we have payouts that we have to put there. We have uh, through the contract money set aside for teachers who, who take classes and, and get a small amount of reimbursement for the classes that they take. We might have monies that we budget for um, professional development. And sometimes those monies get spent out. Sometimes those monies don't get spent out because we had a great health year. We didn't have any workplace injuries. We didn't have staff taking as many courses and, and putting in for tuition reimbursement. So we get to the end of the fiscal year and there will be accounts that have some budget monies still sitting in in there. We can use those monies if we use them early enough. And, and this is one of those rare occasions where without school happening now, these last couple of months, we know, we know we're not paying, you know, as we, as we showed up there, substitute teachers. We're not hiring any more substitute teachers in any of the buildings. So that money would sit there uh, and, and go unspent and either we put it or allow it to stay in fund balance, which then the state would say, oh, you didn't use that $100,000 last year, so we're going to reduce the amount of state aid because last year you didn't need that. Um, we, so we sit on some of those pots of money, so to speak, because we don't know if we'll need them, but we have to have them there almost a, you know, what if scenario, what if someone falls and gets hurt and, and it's a large workman's comp claim. We need to have money sitting in that workman's comp account so that it doesn't have to come somewhere else out of, out of the budget. So it is, it, it, it can be a rather fluid budget. Um, and we, we go based on our best projections. We haven't had a workman's comp claim in, you know, in four years, so we're just gonna cut that back to zero and then that's the year that we get three people injured and they're substantial and, and now where do we find that money? So we, we try to put a budget together that protects the integrity of the educational budget, protects the integrity of the maintenance and, and then protects, you know, and puts money in areas that we might need it, such as the insurance or the workman's comp insurance or uh, tuition reimbursement and those kinds of things. So yeah, there were, there were a lot of cuts. Um, we did get um, additional state aid this year that we weren't expecting. Um, in my email today, um, we were slated to get in excess of $100,000 more in state aid next year and that's where some of our budget issues are, you know, where I'm, what I'm looking at um, for next year. If, if what I heard was accurate um, and there's a budget repair bill that goes through Madison and gets approved and they take that 179 
or a hundred or one hundred and seventy nine dollars per pupil away from us. Instead of budgeting with that in our budget, uh, I'm working with Marsha to to put the budget together without that money. So if it comes, we would be in a much better place as opposed to I'm anticipating that comes in and all of a sudden the state says, not only are you not getting that, we're going to ask you to reduce your budget by another 50 or $100 per pupil. And I could, I could totally see that happening because the state is not going to have any money. They're not getting any money from sales tax. They're not getting any money from gas tax. Small businesses are not open. The state is going to be hurting for money, and it's really nobody's fault. You can't blame anybody, but that's the harsh reality of the situation we live in. So, so I'm trying to use budget surplus money that we have now to address needs for next year and address that potential deficit next year. You know, the, the way I look at the operating referendum is that it, it wasn't a referendum for next year. It was a referendum for the next five plus years. And, you know, as we anticipate salaries going up with CPI, fuel costs going up, except for right now, you know, but we use those, those commodities, utilities, fuel, food, healthcare premiums, those are all are trending up. And, you know, our spending limit remains the same. And so over the next several years, it seems to me the way I see it, you know, is we're going to hit more and more potential budget deficits that we're going to have to navigate. And with the operating referendum, that gives us a little more time to navigate maybe smaller anticipated deficits and maybe move money around, um, make more minor adjustments before we have to make major cuts um, to major programs um, or, you know, uh, to major things in our budget without reconsidering going to a referendum again. That's how I see the advantage of the operating referendum, if that's helpful at all. Mitch, could you explain again um, that the Chromebooks, you mentioned the incoming freshmen will get them. Uh, where does the, um, where is the rest of the Chromebooks going? They'll be um, between the, the, the middle school and the elementary school. Um, we, we started with Chromebooks in the high school and then as, we, as they started to age, we started to uh, kind of like that, that big brother passes it down to the little brother. So it, it kind of started to make its way into the middle school. And then some of those that were in some of those original purchases um, can no longer be updated and no longer be used for um, the state testing. And in, in recent years, the state testing has gone to all computer and, and you can use a Chromebook, but the Chromebook has to be a certain version in order to be able to download the state testing software uh, onto them. And, and we have quite a few Chromebooks that, that will no longer support. We, were, we had made some purchases for this year in preparation and it was going to be a matter of, um, you know, classroom A was going to test today and they would have to move theirs down to classroom D for a day and then back to A and then over to C and then to F and then, so it was going to be a lot of juggling um, of all of those machines and carts and sometimes even between buildings. So this number allows all of those older machines to be replaced and um, we have roughly 40 seniors graduating and we're gonna have um, 50, mid 50s, eighth graders coming in. So we would not have enough MacBook Airs to rotate around to the freshman class uh, without having to make some substantial purchases. So the, the process was, you know, if we're going to go to the Chromebooks in the high school, let's, let's put them in that freshman class. Uh, so that bumped this number up a little bit higher to get them into the freshman class. So if I'm understanding you correctly, for 21-22, 
we're going to need three more grades worth of Chromebooks. Yes. With the being up, if we decide, it sounds like we're not going to purchase and continue to use the MacBooks after, after the lease is up. So yeah, two years from now, we're looking at another three grades worth of purchases. Right. Our, our current lease payment for that MacBook Airs um, is somewhere in the neighborhood of, uh, I'll, I'll go on the low side, about $54,000. Right. So to be able to, it, let's just say there were 60 kids in each class, you know, if you're, if you spend 300, so hundred, you know, 180 Chromebooks at $300 a piece will be less than that $54,000. Right. I just wanted to make sure, uh, you know, in anticipation of, of future purchases that, that those were still going to be on the table. So right. is our, yeah. is our vision long-term to, if we're, if we're switching to Chromebooks to cycle out Chromebooks every three years, or do they have a lifespan of four years? If do we do we buy one, buy them for freshmen coming in, and they keep the same Chromebook until they graduate, and then we consider that life cycle over? What's realistic here? That's what we've been trying to do. Um, when we first started, we started with Chromebook books, and that was the plan. Um, that and we actually our first batch actually made it five years, um, and then. That's when the decision was made to switch over to MacBook Airs. So any Chromebook that was still serviceable, you know, made its way to middle school and elementary school. You know, there might have been, uh, you know, Mrs. Smith might have wanted five Chromebooks and Mrs. Jones took four more, you know, so they, they got parsed out that way until they were absolutely past their usable life. And then it was, you know, as they're being, you know, rolled into more of the classroom experience and the instructional practices. Okay, now now we're finding out we need to upgrade those. Um, and they do state testing all the way down into third grade. So we need to make sure we have at least enough Chromebooks to be able to test our students and, and not saying that it has to be a one-to-one -one environment in the elementary school, but we need to make sure that we have enough Chromebooks available to test those students at any given, you know, a given number of students at any given time. Can you explain the smart panels, the laptops, and the teacher workstations? I understand the Chromebooks. Okay, the, the smart panels um, are, these are in uh, two locations. They're the two oldest ones we have in the district now, and it's in a plan, it's in a rotation plan to replace them. So um, one is in an elementary classroom and one is in a is in a high school science classroom. And um, it is an interactive um, device at the front of the classroom. Um, teachers are able to basically record their lecture notes. And if they make marks on the board, if they make notations, it can be recorded and saved. Um, into a digital format and, and shared with students, uh, posted into Google Classroom and those kinds of things. So these are at the end of life cycle and, and need to be upgraded. Um, the laptops, the bulk of the laptops are needed in the um, agricultural classroom, Mr. Robinson's classroom. He has been asking for replacements um, at least for the last three years, maybe even the last four years. And every year um, I need to go out to Mr. Robinson and say, um, do you think you can get one more year out of your laptops? Um, because the money is just not there and he has done so, but these laptops, he has enough seats for his um, plasma cutter that if he has 11 laptops, he is paid for 11 seats so kids can be working on projects away from the cutter and then save that to a jump drive or a thumb drive and then take that program into the shop, plug it in, upload it, and, and run their program and have their project cut out. So the laptops that he has been using 
are, again, um, uh, I, I have on my mom's side, uh, my mom was 100% Swiss, and I always say that there were a lot of tight-fisted Swiss. So we, we've used those machines to the best of our ability to the, for the longest life possible, and, and they're now in need of replacement um, because they'll start dying. Uh, and I, I think probably one or two have already gone. So those, the bulk of those laptops are for the egg. Um, I have a couple of administrators that use laptops instead of desktops um, that will be getting a new laptop machine. So they're basically upgrading their workstation. And then the teacher workstations, every teacher workstation is operating on a Windows 7 platform. And they cannot, they can't just be simply upgraded to Windows 10. They need new hardware configuration. Uh, Windows 7 is no longer going to be supported. There will be no longer virus protections for Windows 7 machines. Um, so they need to be upgraded. And those, the teacher workstations will replace every teacher machine in the elementary, middle, and high school. So any, any staff member that has a machine operating a Windows 7 would get upgraded to a Windows 10 workstation. So that's that cost. My, my I, concern, um, sorry, is, um, you, you know, for the, for the things that Gary mentioned going on at the state, I'm not sure it's going to be a, a one budget repair bill and that's the solution. The next biennium may also be a, sorry, but we've got we've to fix this problem of no revenue for however many months it becomes. Um, it's not a one-time fix because there's just not enough money there. It, it may be a, a $0 increase for, for the next biennium. So then we may be looking at, um, you know, two or three years of technologies where we decide to cut uh, of not getting these things. And now it's six years that Mr. Robinson has gone with the laptops. We've identified um, the surpluses that we have available here. It, it fixes some of our issues in the, the deficit for next year. So I'm gonna make a motion that we approve the purchases as presented. Andy, just a question in your motion, does that include everything, the zero turn mower, the 60? Yeah, everything on the, the list. The rest of it is in the current budget already. Um, the Roger yeah. had for it. Yeah. The only only thing I was wondering is some of that stuff is it is it all bought new the zero turn mower sixty foot snow blower brush hog is that all new equipment? It it would be um, the we don't have a second. yeah um, until we have a second if we have a second then we can have more conversation on this. Uh, I'll second the motion. Dr. Dunn. The the. All the items on the top portion of the list, all of the technology items, will will re help reduce the deficit in next year's budget. Will help if we have a zero increase or if we end up with less money. You know, in other words, a negative increase. You know, if they come in and say you're going to get fifty dollars less per pupil, those those monies, those purchases will help reduce that. The items on the bottom are all items. Um, we, we need a, a, a lawnmower and, and everybody that Roger has talked to had said, you know, if you get a zero turn, you know, you cut down on the amount of time you spend mowing, you know, your, all of the properties that we have. Um, the snow blower addresses that some of the issues that we'll have at the elementary school based moving forward based on some of the new construction. It, it will be an attachment to the current um, skid steer that we have. Same thing with the, the, the brush hog is on there. That's just, just under $4,800. That's another attachment to um, our skid steer. And, and those price quotes came from farmer's implements. So yes, I believe they are all new pieces of equipment um, and would come with whatever warranties that you would have. All of those items on the lower portion of the budget are all items that Roger has money available for in this year's budget. 
So that none of those monies is offsetting any deficit, but it's equipment that we have used or will need to have as we move forward. Um, seal coating the parking lots. Those will actually be the two parking lots here at the middle school, high school. The lot closest to the football field will all be seal coated. And then what most kids refer to as the teacher parking lot, the lot closest to the building and on the north side will be seal coated. And it will also include, there are um, 10 spots that uh, Midwest seal coat would come out and use their infrared process. So it would heat up the current blacktop, allow them to kind of work it up, level it back out and, and compress it prior to seal coating. So it would kind of address a couple of issues off of not on the main road, main drive that's going to be completely done. So the 17,000 would seal coat and crack fill both the two parking lots and provide that infrared process to 10 different locations in, in either one of those parking lots. So Hi. those are all, those are all items. Roger has monies available in other budget accounts that would allow him to cover those items. Thanks, oh, Mitch. We, we aren't in a position to fix this now, but the thought of replacing every teacher in the elementary, middle, and high school's workstations in the same budget seems like not great planning. I mean, if, if they're still operating on Windows 7 and we need to get a move to 10 because seven's no longer being supported, we're gonna have to do it all at once, but I think we need to consider looking at that so that we can look at this in, in three year chunks going forward and be rotating them out. Absolutely, and I have, I've asked Dependable Solution to do that with other pieces of equipment as well. You know, please don't come to me and say, okay, you need to replace 50 smart boards this year. I want a rotation I, and, and they have started to do that for me on other pieces of technology. Um, and quite honestly, you know, when, I mean, the laptop that we're using for the board meeting operates on Windows 10, you know, and I had asked a couple of years ago and they're like, well, you, we should be able to get a couple more years out of the Windows 7 machines. I'm like, okay, um, I just can't, again, I, I can't afford to get caught in, in this situation and yet I'm, I'm caught in this situation. So yes, I, I am asking that they do a little bit better job of having that foresight to say, okay, you know, in two years, we're gonna need to phase all these machines out or in three years, let's, let's do a third now, a third and a third. And, and the next thing you know, your, your dollar amount that you're looking at is, you know, more like 1600 or 1500, you know, somewhere in, or 15,000, I should say, you know, instead of one lump sum of this amount and, and it's, it'll be easier. And, and to Andy's point, yes, you know, um, the number I was quoted is that there will be about a $2 billion shortfall in tax revenues for the state in this last quarter. So uh, with, with businesses, you know, not yet opening up and slow to open up, you know, tax collections are going to be sl very slow and, you know, people's income is going to be reduced. And so income tax payments are going to be lower. And this is probably going to be a multi-year pain that, uh, you know, I'll go on record now and say it, we're probably going to have to start looking at, you know, what is the state going to do to repair the budget? How's that going to impact schools? And are we looking at pay freezes or, you know, if, if the CPI is 2%, can we afford 2%? Can we only afford 1%? And, and, and those kinds of things, um, those are all things that I think are going to be facing us you know, probably halfway through this next fiscal year as, as we look at what comes in the two years that follow. Mitch, I have a couple of questions about the technology. Yes. Uh, one is, what's the lifespan of those smart panels? And my second question is, why does Mr. Robinson's ag classroom need laptops when all the high school kids have their own MacBooks? Uh, the, program, the program that he uses does not operate on a MacBook. Um, so he needs a, 
a PC type laptop in order to, to run that program. Um, so that's one of the issues. Um, smart boards, smart panels. Uh, if you get five years out, that's great. If you can get any more out, you're, you're kind of winning the lottery. So they're kind of on a five year um, and, and some we've been fortunate to get to last longer. We, uh, we have certainly replaced a lot of bulbs and projectors. We have replaced a lot of projectors and now the newer ones are coming, um, are more, basically it's more like a flat panel TV screen. You know, there, there isn't a projector. So um, we're, we're hoping that the life expectancy of those is, is more than the five years, but uh, you know, if they're not getting moved and those kinds of things, they're not portable, that, that helps with the life expectancy that it's not being moved around and, and bumped and banged and, you know, stored in a dark, dusty closet for a while and then brought out and maybe mishandled a few times. Uh, so typically, you know, if we're getting five years out, I, I think we're getting a, a good return on investment. Do, have, we, have we asked teachers who have the smart panels in their rooms, are, there, are they across the board actively using them in a way that they couldn't be using a more traditional projector or just a large LCD screen? Um, well, some of them are the, the brand name SMART. Some of them are specific to SMART boards. That, um, so they come with tools specific and proprietary to their needs. So, and, and those boards tend to be a little bit more expensive. So those staff members, I, I know like our math department um, uses the smart board because of the smart tools and the smart notebook that comes with it. Elementary, like all the programs that come specific to the smart notebook, um, there are, and please forgive me for not remembering the name of the, the, I'll say off brand panel, which is more like an LCD, you know, a large LCD, but it, a, a, the TV, like the TV that's in the boardroom is not interactive. So it doesn't have any touch features or components to it. So <laughs> teaching from it, um, you don't have the same flexibility, but, but other staff members have gone to that off brand name, it still provides them that flexibility, the ability to manipulate everything right from that screen. Um, they just don't, they don't necessarily need the smart notebook tools that come with it. You know, I like an like a English class might not need the smart notebook tools. So they're, they're using that, that off brand panel. And that comes at a, at a, at a lesser price. And just for the record, I understand how, you know, if we don't use the money, the state won't give it to us. But my only position on this is I've, over the years, there's a lot of things I've had to learn how to make do and get by with. And there's not a lot of money to go around for anybody right now. And that's my only position why I struggle with this. I understand what you're saying, how now is the time to buy it because there won't be money possibly in the future. I get all that. And it's a tough decision. I get it. The, I guess the alternative would be <clears throat> we continue with the, all of the same equipment that we have. Either the money goes to fund balance, which will have a negative impact on school financing and state aid, or, or it goes to fund 46, where it would be used on capital maintenance projects. And we just come in and cut all of those things out of the budget for next year. And, and like I said, we would still be then left with the teacher machines running Windows 7 that will no longer be supported and, and Chromebooks that will not, you know, my, my hope is that we're back in school and we'll be giving those state tests next fall or next spring, I should say, but, but have machines that won't operate with the, that testing environment and because they're not supported for the testing software that has to go on them. We, we, we can do those things as well. Mitch, Mitch, one last question on, on Mr. Robinson's laptops. I mean, I, um, 
I want to I want to make sure that he gets the devices he needs for that classroom. But you know, I noticed that the laptops you're requesting are almost a thousand dollars a piece um, compared to nine hundred dollars approximately for a MacBook and three hundred dollars all in for a Chromebook. Is is there a did we explore all options for PCs to handle this one program that Mr. Robinson uses? Well, yes, um, the, and those those laptops in the ag department will be used for other things as well. Um, some items won't go on a Chromebook due to, uh, you know, the lack of a hard drive. Um, he needs that memory capacity, he needs the processor capacity. Um, the 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 number of laptops brings the price down to kind of that nine hundred dollar. You know, it's under a thousand dollars per laptop um, uh, on the volume. The um, it's you know, and, and I've asked those, that question: Is this something that that could go on uh, a MacBook Air and a MacBook Air versus this laptop are Maybe it might be a hundred dollars different, you know, in, in that price, but but to have the hardware and the processor that he needs to order to operate that particular program, he, he needs that PC environment, um, and the laptop allows a little bit more flexibility for students versus putting eleven workstations. You know, another you know you could put eleven more teacher stations out there, um, but they don't necessarily allow for the flexibility for movement and, and use in that capacity for him. Okay, thanks. Yep. So my quick thoughts on everything is, I'm kind of like with Gary there, I, I uh, pretty frugal and I hate to spend money unless we need to. But in this scenario, kind of like Mitch has said, I'd rather be prepared than caught off guard because we know that can be more expensive if you know, these break down middle of next year and all of a sudden then we have to replace all these things in piecemeal. And with the equipment for Roger, as far as if we had to hire somebody else to come in and remove snow in the parking lots, it's going to be way more than $6,000 in the life. I don't know what a lifespan of a snowblower would be. Same thing with the mower and the brush hog. We paid roughly $700 last year for one mowing of our uh, Oak Savannah, which if we purchase a brush hog, we can do that ourselves. Plus we have all of these additional properties. Um, so that's kind of my thoughts on everything, I guess, too, is I'd rather be prepared and, and put the heavy equipment to do it ourselves. Any other questions, concerns, or comments on the uh, proposed purchase items? No. I just want to say I, I, I agree. We, we have limited options with an anticipated surplus at the end of a year budget, um, you know, to maximize the advantage, you know, because if let's say this motion on the table gets voted down, um, you know, we can revisit Roger's stuff that's in the budget later, but then this extra surplus would go to, if I understand it right, it would go to fund balance, which is kind of our, you know, emergency kind of contingency fund. And, and that would go into a formula that may lead to us getting less state aid for the next budget. And, uh, and, and there's very few items that were, uh, that we can purchase at this point that would pass an audit for, as far as that would meet the criteria for allowable purchases that would last us for several years. Um, that is but. correct. Um, and, and John Forrester, who, um, who was one of the gentlemen that does a lot around the Capitol, had said one of the other items legislators in Madison may take a look at is your fund balance. Uh, and, and we have a very solid fund balance and our fund balance helped us get a better bond rating when we wanted to borrow money for the referendum um, but we're, you know, we're above 20% in our fund balance. And I, I would hate for legislators to come in and say, well, you, if you have a fund balance over 18%, we're going to reduce your state aid 
and force you to use your fund balance to, to make up that difference. Uh, because again, that isn't necessary. The fund balance isn't necessarily just a, a shoebox full of money that we have buried out behind the school. That, that's other assets <clears throat> that, that make up that, that fund balance. So it's not all liquid assets. <clears throat> so we, you know, we, we, you know, between Marsh and I will certainly keep a very watchful eye on what comes from Madison and what kind of conversations are happening as to what will happen with budgets coming in the future. Um, we have to have <clears throat> something ready. Yes, we certify the levy and set, you know, and finalize everything in October, but I, I can't wait until potentially July if a budget repair bill comes then to say, oh, well, we anticipated getting 179 and now we're gonna give back all of that plus another 100 more. I, I have to pick a budget amount to move forward with that tries to put the school district and our taxpayers in the best position. So I'm actually looking at a, a budget that sh would show a $50 reduction per pupil. I, I'm trying to get us a balanced budget based on that kind of budget forecast. So anything that is closer to zero will be better for our school district than, than as Nate said, you know, I, I, I don't want to be caught with a surprise and, and plan that, okay, we're going to get $100 per pupil and the next thing you know, we're giving back that plus another 200. I, I want us to be better positioned to be able to handle something that's coming and, and, and not know what that is yet. So Mitch, if we, if we approve this tonight, particularly the pieces around the, the deficit reduction, and then something drastic does happen, like one of the walk-in coolers goes out, can, that, then what? Again, the, the, you know, the borrowing the 50 from, or not borrowing, you know, transferring. Reallocating. The 50, yeah, reallocating the 50 from Roger, he still has enough money in that particular capital maintenance account to cover everything that you see there. And he has capital maintenance. He has another account that he'll use for more of the day-to-day -day things. Um, so when we first left, uh, there was an awful lot of cleaning that took place and disinfecting. And, and we have all of the products and, and materials that we need so that, you know, had we come back to school this year, there would have been another round of deep cleaning and disinfecting as many things as possible to be prepared for kids coming back. We still will have those things. So we'll look at doing that uh, whenever we come back in the fall that we would, again, start with that disinfecting and cleaning. We have those things, but then there are other items that because we hadn't been in school, there are you know, other cleaners, other items that we just didn't use because of not being in school the second half of March, all of April, all of May. So there are monies that he still has available in some of his other capital or other maintenance accounts that he can still use so that if there were something like a, a compressor that goes bad, he would have money available to cover those expenses. And Roger is the first guy that would, would tell you if he were sitting on this meeting tonight, he would be the first guy to tell you, I would rather see money go into the classroom and I'll do without versus the other way around. Um, and, and, you know, he came to me and said, if you think any of these items shouldn't be purchased because you'll need them to help reduce the deficit, <clears throat> I'll just do without. And I, and I, said, I, I believe Roger that we'll get there. We'll, we have enough places to go to reduce the budget deficit that this is equipment you need. It will help maintain the buildings and grounds in both locations. It will be here for a long time to come. You know, you've got the money in your budget. Let's spend it on those items. So we have a motion and a second on the table. Uh, any more discussion? If not, we'll call the question. Bush. Yes. Dunn. Yes. Heisner. 
Yes. Lindsay. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Chambers. Yes. Thank you. Next meeting is May 11th at 6.30. All right, next meeting is May 11th at 6.30. Um, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion from Dunn. Sullivan. Second, Gary. All right. Before, before we adjourn, can I ask, is what does Zoom cost us to do this meeting kind of thing? I have, this is a professional account, and we have this uh, as a member of the dues that we pay to CISA 3. Oh, good. Okay. So we have this account um, through them, basically. We've, we've paid them in our membership fee and the account we get because of that. Oh, okay. Good. All right, all in favor uh, to adjourn Aye. the meeting? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion no. carries. Yeah. Good job, Nate. <laughs> Thanks, Nate. Thanks, Nate. Thank you.